welcome 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 my lovelies i am so happy to be doing this next video um and so excited can you tell <laughs> welcome everybody um first of all um well first of all as always cheers fresh cup of tea ah lovely Hopefully you have um, sat down and made yourself a drink, tea or coffee, tea or coffee or whatever, um, and sit with me and enjoy drinking it whilst watching my uh, antics here, what I'm getting up to. So moving on, this is uh, part three um, of uh, the, the, the Art Deco build. Um, as I'm doing this from the beginning and all the way through this journey, all the things I come up against, all the problems I come up against, uh, the things that work, the things that don't work, I'm going to mention them all as I go along. Um, I like to, if I can, I like to try and make my videos sort of worth watching, as in maybe there's things that you think that, that I've said and you'll think that's a good idea or I'm glad he told me about that, I'll make sure I don't do that. And whatever so hopefully all of this will help someone out there um, so what we're going to do is well I'll tell you first of all the uh, the flooring I decided to put the flooring down before I built the house I'm going to do as much decorating as possible as far as I can think ahead before putting bits of wood together and the actual build um, some of it I'll just be will end up building and then I'll decorate things once the rooms are in place um, but at the moment if I if I can then I'll, I'll um, do bits first before before it's put together um, so with this I just wanted something quick something plain something easy so I got some um, sheets of the herringbone um, wood effect paper that will do that's that and the room will be white so a nice wooden floor look will look good um so just tell you to tell you how i put this on quickly it was in two sheets so there's a, a join there i don't know how easy it is to see i matched it up as well as possible um so it wasn't obvious um and there's going to be a bit of wood here anyway um and uh, i might even put a work of art stand in there so you won't really see much of the join when it's finished so what i did for this the the actual paper um, it was wide, wider than the depth, even out to here. It was wider than the depth of uh, the build, which was good. So I just got the first sheet and laid it in line with the edge of the groove there. So the wall's going to go on, uh, join it there. Um, so it will go right up to the wall, um, which is again is good because the walls aren't already in place. So I haven't got to try and fit it. Hurrah. Um, so I just lined that up so it was exactly square and covered the end of the, 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 the house so you could uh, see it and then while it was up this way I just uh, sort of weighted it down so it was in place then I lifted one end up put a couple of just a couple of um, thin bits of double-sided uh, tape uh, just on the wood around the edge one there two at the end one here peeled it off and then laid it back down again so this was still straight and that was enough to hold it in place. And then I lifted this end up, put a couple of bits of tape down, laid it down, and the whole thing was laying really quite flat. So of course it was all sticking out here. So what I did then was to turn the whole thing over. And where the paper was sticking out here, I just got the X-Acto knife and, well, X-Acto knife, and uh, just cut carefully all around the edges perfectly or as best I could so I did that for both pieces and when it was finished it's come right up to the edge there I mean the walls of the house are going to be laying on that and covering it so when you look inside the house the the flooring will go you know right up to the wall and under so it should look really neat and tidy when it's done um, and also if anyone's wondering I used um, I used a PVA glue just to stick the paper down onto the wood and it worked fine. Um, so that's that out of the way, left that for a few days to dry. All the pieces of the wood for the ground floor of the house I have painted 
um, white. Um, with that, because it was bare wood, um, I didn't think to start with, so this is a learning process. Um, so I, I got a white wood paint, which I have used, but the mistake was that I painted the white wood paint straight on for the first coat. And it, it, you could tell that it had soaked in quite a lot. And obviously I thought to myself, duh, um, you should really put a, um, a, a base coat on underneath, like an undercoat, and then paint the wood paint on top. Um, so with that, um, I sort of looked it up, read some articles and things. Um, you could have used a, I could have used a watered down PVA um, glue and literally just painted all the wood with that and let that soak in and dry and then your uh, wood paint would then sit on top of that easier than not soak in. Or you can use an undercoat paint, a white undercoat paint. You can actually buy undercoat, um, which we've used for the house. So I should have known these things, guys. Come on. Anyway, so I didn't have any of that, but also you can use, especially on a, a dollhouse like this, um, you can just use a white emulsion paint that, you, that um, you know, just emulsion paint that you would use for walls. So, and I had, we've got an old tin, a big tin of old white emulsion paint. So I then ended up just painting the whole lot of wood in the white emulsion paint, let that dry for a few hours. And then I went over and I did two coats on top of that of the um, proper white wood paint. Um, that might have been a bit of an overkill, but I am going to, I, I, I've got one thing you must know about me <laughs> is that I have got a bucket load of uh, patience. Um, so I don't, this journey, I, as you can tell, I am just loving it. So it's going to take a long time, but I want everything like the wood and everything. I want it really nicely done um, and I want it to wear well. Um, if it's too thin, you, you know, over time, um, it may chip or whatever. Um, so no, so I, I've, each, each floor I'm going to paint all the sections with the white emulsion paint, let it dry, and then two coats of the top wood, uh, white wood paint. And in between each coat, I did a light sand and sanded it down as well. Um, so, you know, it should look okay. Um, although the, the uh, outside of the building is going to predominantly be white, and I have painted it white. Um, the other night in bed, through the night, as you know, that's when I do all my designing and uh, work and everything on the house, um, lying in bed. Um, and I did think to myself with uh, a lot of the old Art Deco buildings like this, this type of building, um, a lot of the uh, outside of the walls, um, at the moment, it looks like flat white wood and that wouldn't be realistic, really. Um, I know I'm not going to keep everything in the building 100% realistic, but when I can, uh, and it, uh, whatever, I will um, sort of uh, try and make the effect look a bit better. So I'd imagine this building, if it was a white building, it would have had that um, shingle underneath. Uh, is it called shingle? I don't know but it would be all um, sort of lumpy bumpy. Uh, so it would have a texture on the outside of the wall. So once the building was built, they would have uh, pasted over a, uh, this, you know what I mean. Anyway, so I'm still going to paint it all white on the outside and it will obviously be smooth, um, but I'm not going to bother. I did actually sand all the outside wood and then uh, when I was in bed, I was thinking this up. So I'll, when I do the rest of the floors, I won't bother sanding the outside of the building. But after they're all finished, and I think maybe I'll wait until I've put the building together, um, I'm going to mix up some more of the uh, white paint and mix in some sand in with it. And then I'm going to paint over the outside and let it dry so it's got a rough, uh, texture so it looks like a little shingle, a little rough uh, rough texture. So that hopefully will come as it. I don't think I'll do those bits 
separately with all the rough bits on and then put it together I'm not sure I'll think about that one um, because then you when you're putting the building together if it's sort of rough I might need to do that and then sand edges just to make sure I can stick it together let's see we'll see how that goes but either way I will change the outside texture of the building so before we glue these bits together and put them all together they are now ready to put together um, as you would remember from the last video I had the uh, chimney breast that I was going to change oh god so I think I need a drink for this oh, lovely so of course as I said I wanted this I didn't want it to be a fireplace I wanted it to be um, a column sort of sticking out from the wall and I was going to make a feature of this column and I also said to you if you recall um, that the triangular section which was the top of the fireplace coming right up to here that was stuck on there I was going to put this in a vise and get a hammer and chisel and chisel it off <laughs> so you more experienced guys out there would have been if you had watched that you would have been thinking right away now that I would like to see him with a little chisel and a hammer taking this big lump of wood that was completely glued onto this bit as you will know <laughs> some of you when these bits of wood are glued together in these doll houses they are not going to come apart with <laughs> they're not going to snap off with a hammer and chisel that was such a silly idea come on now um, so I did start and it went nowhere so I ended up um, I didn't have the tools so I went ended up going over to our friend over the road um, married couple over the road and the husband um, uh, is a joiner and, uh, and what have you and he has every tool under the sun so I took it over to him and he put some kind of uh, it was a circular saw a handheld circular saw um, I can't remember what he called it now, um, but he put that on and just carefully went straight along and just sliced that whole triangle off. It's when it's come off, if I show you up close, I don't know if you can see, it's, it's there's still bits, just slithers of wood there um, where it's not completely flat. Um, so, in bed the other night again, as I was designing this pillar, because I have to, I want to decorate this pillar completely before we fix it and fix the walls up. So I have uh, designed the pillar in my head. I could see it the other night in bed and I can see it now. It looks really good up there. So in this video, we're going to uh, make it and just see the finished effect if it actually looks like it does in my head. So I will get the bits and pieces that I have decided to use um, to dress this piece before applying it to the wall. And um, let's see what happens. I can't wait, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'm doing is coating the wood with some PVA glue. And we're going to just cover the uh, cover the column just to smooth out so it gives us a smoother base to work on um, for the, uh, the rest of the decoration. So I'll do that. Now what I've done is cut some pieces of uh, craft card, um, it's called, I think. Um, it's actually the card that I use for my origami boxes for when I sell any um, vases, um, the miniature vases. I always like to sit and make my little macrame boxes with lids and things and just to pack them in and then put them in another box. I think it's just a nice touch. So this is just plain black that I've used. I could have used any colour because I'm going to cover this anyway, but because I'm going to make the pillar black just in my head, I, it just feels all neat <laughs> in my head. If the undercoat is uh, black as well so I've measured it to size and I'm going to stick that on and then I'll go around the sides as well okay so um, before I tell you more let me just show you I've put the card round like so 
and that's nice and flat there's no waves or bumps um, there so it's nice and smooth so that's ready now just for coating on top and um, before I go any further um, it's just so exciting I love when this happens when I get messages from you guys um, whilst making this video literally doing this uh, I got another message um, that a lady had just watched the previous part of this video and um, the part two um, of the Art Deco house and uh, she's her name screen name is fourth gen quilter hi there fourth gen quilter I'll call you fourth for short <laughs> um, absolutely fantastic I just want to say when people write such lovely messages to me on YouTube it just this is what makes me want to do this on camera and uh, show you guys instead of just not switching the camera on and doing everything on my own and no one in the world knows I'm doing it you guys make me want to share this with you it takes a whole lot longer doing the uh, videos and all the editing and everything but it that getting messages from people like you my lovely um, makes it all worthwhile um, you're you're living in Michigan at the moment yay I don't know if I've had any messages from Michigan yet this is so wonderful I feel like I want to collect uh, messages from different parts of the state so if any of you are watching that maybe haven't messaged me yet just message me to say whatever and to let me know where you're messaging from I'm just getting such a thrill from it um, you also mentioned uh, why I like to call Kwafi Kwafi, um, and that is obviously because the first time I visited New uh, America was New York, and um, I think I visited there about three times, maybe four, um, sometimes staying a month or so at a time. I think we stayed two months once, and that was many years ago, um, when I was sort of 38, 40, I'm now 62, I need to get back there and... Uh, refresh my uh, language skills <laughs> or my accent skills because I'm crap <laughs> at accent skills I'm sure although you did know that uh, Kwafi came from New York so well done me um so yes I just wanted to say thank you so 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 much and I thought I would just say hello to you because I am guessing you are obviously watching this next video after watching the previous one so um yes thank you very much for that so Hope you're enjoying this video as well, along with everybody else. Um, and are you drinking a coffee? Who knows? <laughs> right, so that's the first bit covered. Now, um, as I say, I'm just going along with this for the first time, so you'll learn with me um, as we go along. Um, so I have found, I've scoured the internet, I've scoured my shops, in our local town and I ended up going to one of our shops um, a shop called Wilco in uh, Colchester is one of my local stores um, I think it's like um, a B&M or a, like a dollar store except everything isn't a dollar um, but it's uh, just sort of cheaper stuff um, more affordable stuff and I have bought a roll of this I won't pronounce that because I can't without acting without making a fool of myself um, but anyway that's what it's called um, for me I call it sticky back sticky back plastic um, that might be actually what that means sticky backed I don't know um, but anyway what the effect that I want I want this column to look like um, like sheets of black glass so very austere very very over the top this is going to be I have to say obviously coming from my head um, or my mind well really it's the two gay guys the, uh, the sort of uh, extremely wealthy gay guys that own the building um, that, and that are building the art gallery up and everything uh, they're the ones that are deciding what they want and then I just follow their instruction exactly like I did with the French lady um, in the Parisian haberdashery shop and house um, she uh, as, you, as you know she came to me recently and I made the uh, farmhouse table for her which is extremely happy with I will show you it in situ when I've got so much more pieces in that room at the moment it's an empty room with a table 
so no point in putting that on video really um but yes uh oh and also it did make me laugh uh you you people that are following me will um will know uh, or will, will see the funny side of this that when i have been doing the parisian house you will know that um this all the discussions and the ideas all happen when i've gone to bed at night because during the day i'm just thinking about everything else to go through a day at night time is when i lie down close my eyes and think now this is my spare time to just play in my head and think and uh, get my ideas i'm sure lots of people do that um but i really in my mind i really live it out in my head as you will know and um, so i used to have the french lady uh, coming to me at night and discussing different things um, and i did joke about um uh, uh, wondering how John felt about that because he's asleep one side of me and I've got this French lady sitting on the bed the other side of me as we discuss her, her property, her house and whatever. Um, so he sort of saw the funny side of that, did John. Um, but I don't know, I haven't found out yet how he feels about being asleep on one side and these two um, wealthy gay guys coming in and sitting on the bed chatting to me about their uh, building. I don't, I'm not even sure if I want to admit it to John yet. I don't, I, you know, he might just say enough is enough already. <laughs> who knows, who cares? <laughs> but anyway, so they want a, a black glass, uh, glass layered mirror, uh, not, well not a mirror, well just black glass, and it's going to be decorated within that as well. I can't wait to show you guys, it's so exciting. So this, I've never used it before. Um, what I'm going to do, I shall just put you on pause while I have a think about it. Um, I'm either not going to peel it and just cut it to shape and then get PVA glue and glue that around the pillar as it is. Um, because I don't know how, if this, I haven't peeled it yet, so I don't know if it stretches easily or whatever. I'm guessing when you, I'm guessing when you take this off, it's probably not going to be really sticky. Yeah, it's not, um, it's not sticky like glue. So I'm thinking if I put that on here, just stick it on, it may start peeling off. So even if I do peel the paper off, I'll probably still put some glue on here and uh, glue it, actually glue it on so it's really nice and substantially um, attached. So, right, okay, so what I've decided to do is I am going to peel the backing off here um, and stick them on. Um, first of all, I, I wrapped a piece around the whole thing, but you couldn't get sharp uh, edges, corners. And I do want it to look like sheets of glass that have been applied to each side. So I do want to see a join of, of sorts uh, down, the, down the sides. If it's wrapped all round, it looks like one solid moulded piece of glass. Um, and I don't want that look. So what I'm doing is just measuring out the, the two side bits and the front bit. And while it's got its paper on the back, I'm just using the X-Acto knife to cut down. Like so. And then I'll cut this to the right width for the front. And then I'm going to apply, um, let me just get some uh, more PVA out. Okay, so let's get some of this and apply it and I'm gonna with with this although this bit of wood is smooth I still want the whole thing going up to the top the actual finished piece so I'm going to glue right up to the top now anyone of you that that does crafting or um, sewing doll housing anything really um, that you just love when you're actually working on a piece and you love and you just go into your own little world normally if i'm working on my own it just everything just goes quiet 
and uh, all of a sudden I realised that three or four hours have passed. <laughs> so, but it is lovely to be on chatting to you guys this time as I am working. So as I say, I've peeled the backing off so it's it's thinner because with the paper it is a bit thicker um, and I might just be too thick then. I'll just stand up for this. I should apply. And of course that slides nice and easily as well. So I can get that really lined up. And although the top does slope off the bit of wood, I'll let that dry and then I'll cut it with the X-Acto knife just to get it exact. So that's why they call it an X-Acto knife. <laughs> I just realised. Duh. There we are. We'll see how this dries. Um, looking good. Right, I may just continue um, and see. Let's see if I like so. Lovely. There we go. And then I'll just measure measure this piece. I think I did it slightly wider. So I've got some, yep, so I've got some to cut off. So I'll get that cut and we'll apply that and then see how it looks. Right, I'm just before I stick the front bit on, I'm just pressing down on this wood and cutting the top piece here, as you can see what I'm doing. Um, and just cutting this piece off. So I've got a flat edge to work with. There we are, so let's shape the shape the sides down like so. And then peel this off. And then stick glue on. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here. And again, because of the glue on there, I can hopefully sort of slide it into into place. Yes. Excellent. This is just the beginning, but at the moment this looks exactly how it was in my head, so um, so that's quite quite encouraging. There. And that does rub, rub off um, the, the glue. So <laughs> there we are. I'm just going to let that dry um, off, and then the the top bit there that's sticking out. I'll let it dry, and then I'll cut that off, and um, to make a nice neat finish. And then right, okay. Um, as you can see, guys, um, after I finished the pillar, and then was working on what I was doing next, I thought it just wouldn't look good with a white uh, wooden block um, floor plinth sticking out. So the whole thing is in black glass. Why not? The guys would do that, wouldn't they? They'd have the whole thing built in glass. So what I did, I'm just showing you this bit quickly. Um, I've stuck the three panels around the edge there and then around the top edge there, I don't know if you can see properly, but I've just gone round roughly with a black, um, just a fine black uh, marker pen um, just around the edge there. Because this is white um, I, and it's hardwood, so I don't want to cover it in um, black card. There's no need. It's flat enough. Um, but I just don't want the gaps there showing 
um, white. So uh, let's put, put some glue on here. I have to be careful now putting this on so I don't get it everywhere. And then hopefully when I stick this on it won't, uh, as I said, there won't be any white gaps. Um, I was thinking as well, um, fourth, if you're watching, um, you said you also said in your message that one of your uh, favourite periods is the Art Deco period. And I just want to say that it's, apart from the fact that folk watch my videos and enjoy them, um, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm interested in dollhouses and enjoy the dollhouse videos, it's really nice to know that someone actually loves that period. So I'm doing an Art Deco dollhouse, and I know that you're not only enjoying it because it's a dollhouse video, but you're enjoying it because it's a period that you love. So I hope there's some other ones, other people out there that uh, think the same thing. Because this is going to be a big journey, guys. Hopefully you'll be with me throughout the journey. Now, if I can just peel off. Make sure my fingers are clean. Just butt it right up to the corner. Yay. There we are. Yeah. Hopefully you like that that idea. Um, so then the artwork will stand out, the colour of the artwork, whatever it's going to be, will stand out. But obviously I am not finished, so I'm going to cut some pieces of wood next and then sh show you my god i can't wait i'm so excited get on with it boy <laughs> okay so now i have cut three different lots of wood um different pattern wood there's one there that shape and one like that I'll show you the end of it the profile and a different one, slightly smaller one, like so. That's got some tiny, tiny markings on it. Don't know if you can see it. Anyway, so I've cut these and they are going to wrap around the pillar at different sections. Woohoo! And I've got some more to add. I've got more to add to it as well. I'm going really over the top. Hurrah! Which is what they did in the art in Art Nouveau in the Art Deco days. Um, right, I'm going to start by covering. I've I've I just laid each piece of wood on and marked it where I wanted it, and then cut at the right angle, exactly the same as you're doing um, corner sin um, or the um, kick boards or skirting boards uh, around a room in a house, um, exact or going around a fireplace or a chimney breast, exactly the same thing. So I'm going to start off with this, it's um, classic coloured treasure gold. You can get different colours, I don't know how many, it's probably about three different type, different uh, gold colours, um, but this is the classic. Um, or you can get the Florentine or Florentine, Renaissance, um, brass, copper, pewter, silver. And there's eight colours altogether. Um, but this is the classic one. Um, I'll take this out. They're quite expensive to buy. They're little jars, but they're quite expensive uh, compared to a lot of paints. Um, but I think I'll have this forever and ever and ever. Um, it goes a really long way. And you can, I'll just show you it there. You can just rub it on with your fingers. Um, I'm just going to... Get, I'm going to try it with a small brush. Let me just get a small brush. Right, the brush, brush idea is going on nicely. I won't paint the underneath of this one. This one's going to go around the base. Um, there we are. And what I have done, let me just replace the lid 
I've got gold fingers now. Gold finger. Right. What I have done for each piece, I've written on it uh, left side, right side, front. Um, some of the pieces, because they're around, there's two short pieces there and a long piece. We know the long piece will be the front, but I've written it so it's the right way up. So when I come to glue it on, I won't uh, forget that I'm doing them that way and I keep it the right way up. So that one is the front and it's the lower part because of one going on the lower. And it's that way up, not that way. So I, I just know then that I'm gluing them all in the right place, at the right level. Um, so as I say, these are all um, these are all gold now. Um, but which is why this is here. Um, I will hold that up and just hold that. Yeah, that's fine. On some of the things that I'm going to do, I may just use the gold uh, cream um to paint it gold not everything will be exactly the same but on this pillar because i want it to shine and i want it to stand out um i'm going to use there we are some gold leaf I'm going to use this gold leaf so i've got a few of those and i've got a silver I may do something in with silver trim in the house. It may be a mix of gold and silver. Um, looking through images for Art Deco things, I have seen some bits of um, furniture or decoration on pillars where they have where they had gold and silver mixed on the same piece. So I may do that. It is my well, it's not my house. It's these uh, this couple's house, but. Uh, when I'm in bed at night, I will speak to them, they will speak to me and uh, let me know what they want for pieces of furniture and what have you. And whilst doing this video, I have just had another message from uh, Forth, Forth Jane Quilter, um, and you have kindly let me know your name is Roslyn. Hurrah! So pleased to, to meet you, Roslyn. Hope you're enjoying this video too, but uh, that's brilliant. Welcome, Roslyn. Well, I went down earlier to the local supermarket and got a load of goodies and put them all together. And a couple of hours later, I have a lovely chocolate tray bake. Yay! Don't want to make you jealous. <laughs> if you were here, if I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake or even a tray bake. Mmm. It's got peanuts, biscuits, crunched up, light chocolate, dark chocolate. Um, raisins, toffee, it's got everything in it. In fact, I bought the ingredients from the two ladies in the supermarket that saw me when I told them what I was doing and they said they absolutely love things like that. So it just came out of the fridge and I just went down the shop and took them some, wrapped top in some foil. They were completely shocked. <laughs> they know us really well. But I've never taken them cake before <laughs> or any baking. So that made them very happy and they had something nice for their their coffee break later today. Um so I am just this is I've done these bits. I'm just putting the gold leaf on the on these pieces of wood. Um so I'm just putting the size on and then I'm going to leave that for about 10 minutes. Um, just to dry off and it just starts getting tacky and then the gold leaf will adhere to that so let's put that out of the way quick cup of tea mmm lovely oh that is delicious I'm quite impressed um I have done the, the bits that I've done um I don't know you might or might not be able to see it in the camera. Some of the bits are slightly worn there, where you could just dab a bit more of the size on it and go over it and make it absolutely perfect. Um, but while I was doing this, in my head, um, I thought the uh, the guys that had got this uh, sort of wall pillar installed into their building, um, 
they found the they found it was an original so some of the gold leaf had worn off um, but they had it pulled apart and then reconstructed into their their shop so it's got a slight bit of age to it you know as I say it's easy enough just to make it perfect but I just thought no that's nice just that very very slight worn looking where bits of the gold leaf have come off so and it makes it more of a more of an original thing um, so I've got some I've got a couple of other pieces here that I've uh, got ready to um, put gold on I'll do those first well, I'll finish these first and then I'll just start applying it to the um, to the pillar I need a bit more of this so when that's dried off a bit and it's gone a bit more tacky then what I do is just for quickness really is just to lay that down along one edge of the gold leaf and then just sort of roll it over and scrunch it up as I roll it like so and then I can tear off the excess like so and then just start rubbing that in and then if there's if there's too much uh, gap in then I'll go over some little bits just to add a bit more to it brush off all the loose loose particles yeah, you can see there's a little little bit of uh, bits missing there so sometimes it sticks on if you actually thread it and stick it again either that or it's dried up a bit too much um, and uh, and you just need to put a tiny bit more size on Oh, that's clinging okay. Just grab a bit more. Little, little rough bits there you can see that are just left. Tiny bits in there. So I shall leave that as that is. So I'll finish off the uh, couple more pieces off camera and then we'll start applying it to the uh, to the billet itself. Right now, I've put the first piece round, the base piece. There we are. Um, in I've I've I've, uh, I've done a lot of reading, a lot of looking up uh, stuff, and um, in the uh, sorry you can't see all my face, but this is what we're looking at. <laughs> I'm sure you'd rather see this. Um, a lot of the characteristics in, uh, in in the furniture and what have you, um, they've they brought a lot of uh, they used a lot of designs that they used for actual buildings, the outsides of buildings. So a lot of the furniture um, was sort of like uh, you know the same sort of characteristics as uh, buildings had on the outside. So these pieces, oh, I've just stuck. I'm using super glue. I tried um, PVA and I've tried uh, wood glue and sorry, just holding breath. <laughs> um, and both of them took ages to dry because they were sliding on the plastic. The super glue dries right away, which is really good. So, and I'm not um, planning on removing it again, so that's fine. Um, but yeah, a lot of the characteristics. Um, like sculptured decorations, um, lots of geometrics, uh, plenty of geometrics. Um, let me just put this on. Um, also, they had uh, what they what they what they called bandings, which were lines like rows of lines, three lines, half a dozen lines, whatever, but just thin strips, just uh, in a band banding shape. So that was called bandings, um, angular outlines. So lots of square angular outlines, along with portholes, so circles as well. Um, stepped piers, so where it goes up and in and up and in like that. So lots of that kind of shaping, step piers. 
um, tapered pylons. So that's the uh, at the tops of uh, buildings. They very often went off at one angle and tapered in. So that's a characteristic of the uh, Art Deco. Uh, metal casement windows. Lots of curves around buildings as well as angular, uh, angular sections. Lots of curves. Um, columns, lots of up and down columns. So this is very uh, Art Deco, being column, column <laughs> um, and things called eyebrows, where certain like certain uh, height up, you would just get a sort of shelf sticking out, just a, a a thin flat shelf sticking out around the top of a column. I may or may not put one here because I'm putting something else up here, um, but uh, you would also have that as well. Um, but they um, that that was called uh, eyebrows. That's right. I'm trying to think. I knew it was something to do with the face. I don't know why it was called that, but I can't go into too much detail. Otherwise, you spend all your time reading and researching, and not actually getting the job done. And. It's a dollhouse. I don't want to, um, I'm not pretending this is a real uh, architectural piece. Any of the dollhouse isn't real, real. It's just me having fun and doing uh, Art Deco type theme, themes to it. So there's the step. That's got a, a raised bit underneath, so it's not completely flat down on the ground, so just because it's three dimension. And then uh, I'm going to lay this bit down because at the top here, um, front, so it went that way, so I want, yes, that's right, I wanted this at the top. Um, I will stick this bit on around here. Won't need too much glue, I'm sure. And I'll just stand up here so I can get this even because it does stick really quickly Oops. that's it that's that bit yeah super glue works so much quicker so you can see what I'm doing there I've got something to put in here as well, which I'll stick on at the end because I need to measure everything to get that right. Um, but the uh, the banding, I've used little, um, I've put some gold leaf on them, but little um, bamboo uh, stirrers. They're just slightly, slightly beveled, just like a like an aeroplane wing. So they're slightly rounded and I've just, um, uh, gold leafed one side of it so I'm just going to cut those and then put bands across the top there um, I'll get on with that off camera and then sh and maybe sh stick the rest of it on and show you it finished um, oh these by the way came from Chicago yay the lady in um, it was one of the ladies in the uh, donut shop I can't remember the name someone will be shouting at me I know but the, uh, the the cafe in Chicago, we went with the donuts, and uh, one of the ladies there, I told her what I was doing, and she said, "Take a handful." So I took a handful. <laughs> okay, so I finished adding the final detail on, and the final detail is a bit of geometric work. There we are, finished pillar, and I've put the banding around the sides as well. So hopefully, hopefully you guys think that looks okay. <laughs> what I've used here, just in case you're interested, uh, let me get, where is it? Here we are. Um, years ago, I can't even remember when, but years ago I bought a an arbor, just a little kit, like so, and you make it with all these little bits here. So there's eight pieces all together for the feet and then two arches, pieces for the arches. 
Um, I don't want an arbor. I've got no use for an arbor at the moment. Um, so I'm using all these pieces. They're very, very Art Deco in design. So I'm using those to do to put in the house. So hurrah! Right, let's get this first floor put together, and we'll just see what that looks like. So we're going to put the back wall on first. I've just run some glue along there, some PVA glue. And hopefully this is all going to go in fairly easily. I did fit it first of all to see how it fit. Um, then the chimney, the uh, pillars going in next. I'll just run glue from there. So that's lying flush with the back of the panel. Hope you can see this okay. And then this bit, which is well, there's no top or bottom, so it doesn't matter. I can just go in like so, it's fine. Uh, that's going to go in the top. Run some glue in here. Like I said, when I've taken the wall away here, the support, I, I will be putting something else in place of that. Um, that is yet to come. Here we are. Actually, I could use a cocktail stick here to take away any used glue there. Right, okay, there's that bit. And now let me, I'll just get the first floor floor. Right, once I've got the, the side panel in as well, I'm just going to place the first floor on here. I'm not going to glue it. I'll put it in place and then line these up. So everything is squared off. So, and then I shall, um, I'll just put a, a weight on there just to hold that down while it dries. Okay, so that's been on a while, so I can now lift that off carefully. Place that on there. So these should all be in square and in place. And now I'm just going to fit the two front windows. Um, it goes that way, so just run some glue along here. It's getting exciting now, it's just starting to take, take shape. Here we are, it's been along the bottom. Okay, and I'll finish painting the windows on the outside at a later date. I just want to get on with the build at the moment. Now this is lining flush with the front of the board. Like so. There we are, it's nice and square, nice and flat there, and then I'll come around this side, and put the lounge in, um, 
Let me just check something. I just have to make sure that the windows are the right way up, the right way around. This is the PVA glue that comes with the with the kit. Um, and if there's enough, that's fine. If not, then I shall use my own or probably the Gorilla Wood glue. Now that's going to go there and up against there. So I shall glue this bit as well. This will not be moving. Let's put this in place along the front edge. Like so. There we are. And what I'll do, I'm just going to get some tape and tape these two bits together and tape this bit together, just hold it in place. Okay, so I'll just show you quickly. Um, that's the corner side windows there and the corner window. I'll put all the glass in at a later stage. Um, obviously it's not in yet, but I've just taped everything together, uh, taped the sections together to hold them for now. That's the front window there. And then if I come round, and there you can see the the pillar in situ. So hopefully that will all fall into place once the other once the other wall is uh, like the, the same as the ground floor wall. There'll be another wall there across the top. That will finish that whole section off. So looking good so far. Starting to look like a building. Hurrah! Yay! So cheers, everybody. Oh, when you start gluing things, your tea gets cold. Never mind. Um, thank you very, very much for watching this episode number three, I think. Um, as you can see, we are starting to progress. So I'm guessing, I'm not sure what's going to happen next in the next video. Um, we may put the end bits on. Or, ah, actually I think it's starting on the next floor, so watch this space and we'll do the next floor in the next video. Yay, take care folks, thank you for watching, bye all.